Hello everyone and welcome to another Motive tutorial video. In this video I'm going to be talking about rigid bodies. So to start, let me just open my sample rigid body take. And first off I want to talk about what a rigid body is. So rigid body is basically an object that you can put markers on and the marker positions don't change relative to each other. So to show you what I mean, I can have some objects in here, kind of near the center of the take. I have a force plate over here. Let me open my timeline. And then I also have uh, a plate sort of object right here. And this is going to be my rigid body. So to create it, we can just select these markers, right click, go to rigid body, and then create from selected markers and there's our rigid body right there. Uh, one more thing to add is we are in 2D mode. You notice that if we switch to 3D mode, uh, the definitions aren't in, and that's because the definitions haven't yet been baked into the 3D mode. But if I go back to 2D, I do have my rigid body, and I can see it moving around right there. All right, so a couple of things here. I'm actually going to uh, delete this rigid body and just hit delete on my keyboard. And I'll show you a couple cool things you can do. So let's start off, I'm gonna select uh, each of these markers independently. So I'm just holding the control key and then left clicking. I'm gonna use control T, and that's a little hot key to create a rigid body. So now I have this rigid body created, and if you ever want to add a marker to your rigid body, you can see that marker is a part of this rigid body. I can just select it, select my rigid body, Go to rigid body and then add selected markers to rigid body. And that will include this marker in the rigid body solve. Now, one thing you'll notice is that the pivot point is no longer in the center of the rigid body. We can change this by just selecting our rigid body, going to reset pivot, and that'll put it back in the center of all of these markers. And what the pivot point is, is I like to think of it as the origin of the rigid body. When you send rigid body info over, it's based on this pivot point right here. And you can see the info by just going to your rigid body in the project pane and then going into here are the properties, display, transformation, and this, and this real time info is relative to this pivot point. So if I'm moving along, you can see the XYZ position and the orientation are changing. Now you can also see that the orientation is basically the coordinate, local coordinate system of this rigid body. We can see this if we go to display and then turn on this orientation. And that is the local coordinate system for this rigid body. And if at any time you want to reset this, you can just go to transformation and then reset current orientation and this will basically reset this orientation so it's in line with the global coordinate axis, and then that will become the new local coordinate axis for this rigid body. Now you can also set this pivot point to be on one of these markers. Just select your rigid body, select a marker, and then set pivot point to selected marker. And then what this is going to do is it's going to make that marker the pivot point of the rigid body. Now you can also translate this pivot point by using these values over here. So if we wanted to shift the pivot point over uh, some degrees, we can move, or sorry, some millimeters right here, we can just manually move this pivot point. Uh, maybe I want to back a little bit on the Z as well. Maybe we can raise it up a little bit. And that becomes our new pivot point. Uh, we can also apply a rotation. So if I wanted to see rotate the pitch, I can rotate the orientation of this local coordinate axis as well. And that pretty much covers the basics of rigid bodies and motive. And one more thing is that you'll notice that in 3D, we don't have any tracking for this rigid body. We can see that our markers are moving around over here, but 3D data is baked in and it doesn't have the definitions where 2D data is solving on the fly. 
And I'll talk more about the differences between 2D data and 3D data in another video. Just know that if you do change some definitions and properties for a rigid body, it updates in 2D, but in order for it to apply to 3D, you will need to auto label your take. So now that our take is auto labeled, we have the definitions of our rigid body here and we can see it in our 3D data. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and as always, thank you for choosing OptiTrack.